How's it going everybody? Welcome to the channel. This is Big Day Dave and this is episode 5 of a Let's Play series for Farming Simulator 22 on the mod map Maple Farm. And where we last left off, we ended up getting the entire uh, batch of grass fields all harvested, uh, well, mowed. We've got them picked up, fertilized, limed, the whole nine yards. We even purchased another field over across the street from the farm. Uh, got that one again, mowed, picked up, fertilized, limed, perfect. We also installed this beauty. This thing has been chugging away. We are in December now, so you can see it has just been going after it. Look at that. 233,000 liters of hay, 246,000 liters of silage, almost 60,000 liters of methane. This thing is an absolute beast love this thing my little chemistry set right here awesome but as you can see in today's episode we've got some cleaning up to do we have left all the seed lying or i'm sorry the fertilizer and lime just lying here under the port here we need to go put it back need to see if we can put it back into the silo over there and in order to do that we need a way to pick it up because right now all i have is a front loader uh right here and a weight, but I don't have anything to pick this up with. So I need to go up to the shop real quick, purchase a tool to load this stuff up with, and then go from there. So let's go ahead and hop in the tractor. There we go. All right. Let's go ahead and drive on over to the shop. We'll meet you over there. Actually, just occurred to me that I uh, kind of need the front loader tool so I can pick up the part of the tool that I actually need. So let's go and attach to that first. Completely forgot about that. There we go. You know what? Let's go ahead and connect to the ooh, connect to the weight too. Here we go. Perfect. Now we can head up to the shop. And you know what? I'll just go ahead and pick up the tool and I will bring us back in as soon as we get back here to the farm. We'll see you in a little bit. Alright, so we are back here at the farm. I'm gonna go ahead and pull in. You can see I have got me a new front loader tool. I am pretty happy with this. Let's see, let's go ahead and See if I can pick up these two right here. I'll give it a little push. Ooh, that's a little bit heavier than I thought it was going to be. Well, good news is that it will go back in. So that is some good news. Just going to have to do it one bag at a time this time because... There we go. There's one. And two. Just gonna try and get all this stuff dragged over. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Now let's see if I can drive forward. 
There it goes. Ah, perfect. That's working good. Let's see what this is saying. All right, we still have almost 8,000 liters of lime and however much I put in with the fertilizer. So we're going to be sitting pretty good for a little while with fertilizer and lime. Now, when I was up there at the shop, I was talking to the owners there before purchasing this handler here, and they were telling me that I have a few requests around the area here. There's a bunch of farmers who are getting ready to batten down the hatches for wintertime, and they need to prepare their fields so that when springtime comes, they'll be able to just go ahead and uh, seed and get going from there. The problem is, is that they are absolutely swamped with other responsibilities that they have and they're looking for some help so they've basically asked me to uh, accept a few extra contracts right before the uh, start of winter here and I said yes absolutely I could use the money so after I'm all done ooh, I'm all done with loading this up and cleaning up my farm I'm gonna head back up to the shop and I'm going to start working on some contracts. So they told me that they would go ahead and have some of the uh, equipment up there ready to go for me when I get back. So it'll be all taken care of once we get up there. So I'm trying to do this as quickly as possible so that way when uh, we're done here we can boogie back up to the shop and go ahead and get to work. Because... The uh, owner was telling me that they were going to have everything up there waiting for me, but they really don't want their parking lot loaded with a whole bunch of equipment for too long because you know, it's their lot, not, uh, not mine. So I told them I'd get back up there as quickly as possible. There we go. Thinking one more trip with the fertilizer and then one more for the lime, and we'll be good to go. get these last two fertilizers in we should be able to see exactly what we've got going on here that's done all right let's see what we got here looks like we'll have almost 9,000 liters yeah, nice. Not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. Let's grab that last bag of lime. There we go. Perfect. Almost 9,000 liters of each product. Now let's go ahead and disconnect all this. Let's drop it all off and then head back up to the shop and get to work. So like I said, we've got, uh, I'm thinking at least three that I'm aware of, and they said that they may have a couple more uh, in the works, but they weren't 100% certain on that. I guess the person that was talking about it was kind of humming and hawing about whether or not they were actually going to need the help or not so we'll see how that all goes let's go ahead and drop this down disconnect lower that down disconnect all right gonna head up to the shop and get to work we'll see you up there all right so i made it up to the shop let's go ahead and get to work because 
they weren't kidding. They had a lot of equipment just sitting up here waiting for me. So let's do this. So right now, all we've got are cultivating contracts. They just need us to rip up the ground before the ground freezes. And if we take too long, or, oh, goodness. If we take too long and don't uh, get this done quick enough, then the ground's going to freeze and we're not going to be able to do anything. So we've got to hurry. Now this one, I believe the field is tucked away back there, behind this farm over here. Let's see, let's bring up the GPS just real quick so we know where we're going. Oops. There we go. Head off in this direction. Now I think... If I head down here, I'm going to run right into the field. Yep, that's it. Perfect. See, I'm starting to learn the area. Let's see. Oh, but... Where's the entrance? Hmm... That's a even better question. Oh, this will work right over here. Drop this down. this field up. It's doing a good job so far. Now I want to go around the outer edges here first so we can kind of get a good uh, good border from these edges because otherwise it's going to be a real nightmare trying to make my way around this field. If I'm too close to all these hedges and trees and whatnot. It's not going to work out good. Yeah, this is turning out real good so far. We're going to have to hustle, though. We need to get through this field as quick as possible so we can at least get through the other two. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut out here, and I will cut us back in as soon as I'm done with the field. See you in a little while. Alright, we're getting ready to finish up this field. You can see we got this last strip here. I'm 
this one went really well, super fast, really happy with this. So we're going to get here to the end. There we go. Let's fold everything away. And now, going to head back up to the shop to drop this equipment off and pick up the next one. We'll see you up there. Alright, so I made it back up here to the shop. Just going to park this right over here. The owner will come pick it up when they're ready. Now let's grab this big John Deere. Let's see if I can get to the weight. Not really. <laughs> okay, now this one I believe is for a field just across the way here. Let's see, this one is for 94. Which is... Okay, so it's this one here. How do I get to that one though? I think it's I think it's this way. Open the GPS back up. No, this isn't this way. Nope, nope, nope. Let's see, it's gotta be. Oh wait, this is the one by that uh, by the farm over here. Okay, okay, yeah, I recognize it now. Let's see. So it's this driveway over here leading to the the farm just back there. Let's see, so right over here, head down this driveway. There we go. I think the entrance is just back here. Maybe. Yep, right here. Okay, let's unfold this. There we go. Okay, so just like before, I'm going to go ahead and get to work on this field once I'm done with this and get the full kind of border because we do have quite a bit of trees around the outer edge here. But once we kind of get a good little border on the outside of the field, we'll go ahead and start trotting our way up and down and getting everything else all filled in. But in the meantime, I'm going to finish going around, let's see, I probably can just make this, yeah, there we go. Nice little bend in the field. Tell you what, this is a nice size field too, taking a look at it. And I keep, I keep contemplating about something because I received a phone call um, somebody's looking for a harvesting contract to be done and that was the other one I was kind of humming and hawing about whether or not I was actually going to hear back from it while well, I heard back from it 
and they want me to do the work but the problem is is that they don't have the equipment to be able to do it i guess what happened the reason why they're looking for somebody to come out is because their equipment broke down so the problem is i don't have equipment to be able to handle that but i'm kind of kicking around the idea of maybe taking out a loan to do it and that way i'll have the equipment kind of going forward i don't know it's just It's one of those where I could see the, the benefit, and it would be a huge, huge benefit to get the harvesting equipment necessary to be able to do the job. And then, yeah, during the winter time, it's gonna, you know, gonna be a little tight kind of thing. I'm gonna have to live off the loan, have a little bit extra to be able to survive the winter and all that stuff. But really, it's gonna be one of those where it's gonna become super handy and useful the moment winter's done the moment winter's done i'll be able to really start utilizing and putting uh some money into it but it's one of those that it's going to be a current investment for future gains kind of thing so i don't know it, it's it's tough it's really tough do i take the risk of not making my money back do i take I mean, I'm going to make money. That's definitely going to happen. You know, I'm not going to just sit around and, you know, let the money go to waste kind of thing. I'll figure out something to do with it. But one of those, am I going to be able to survive the winter on a loan kind of thing? Is the interest payment going to be too much? I don't know. I just don't know as it sits right now. You know what? I need a little bit more of a buffer Yeah. All right. Well, while I continue to contemplate and hum and haw over the situation, I will go ahead and cut us out here and I will bring us back in as soon as this field's done. We'll see you in a while. So this field is all done. Good to go. Got everything all folded up and I need to head back to the shop and pick up the last bit of equipment. So, so far... We've gotten two of the three cultivating contracts done, and I am no closer as to what I'm going to do with the potential fourth contract. Do I take a loan? Do I go into massive amounts of debt to get that piece of equipment and be able to potentially set myself up in the future or or what? I, I just I don't know. I'm so torn as to how to proceed because right now I've got $35,000 and that's going to be a really tight squeeze getting through the rest of the winter uh, with you know with maintenance and all that stuff so I just I just don't know what to do I'm I'm racking my brain still but we're back here at the shop let's go ahead and drop this set of equipment off and pick up the last set I'll park this right here. And then we'll grab this here. And this one's for field 11. Okay. There we go. All right. Now, GPS again. Now, this one, I believe, is just up here. This is kind of tucked away in an odd spot. So I'm pretty sure once I get to here... I make a left at this street here. And then I follow this road back. Like so.
And I think I take this all the way back here and then make a right. Yep, there we go. I think I think this is exactly where I need to be. Exactly, and then make a right right here. Go ahead and I don't know why I got rid of that. I think it's up here on the left. Perfect. Let's see. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. I'm happy. Now let's see if I can actually get kind of turned around right about here. There we go. And then drop it. There we go. All right. Now. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a few passes on each end and then I can start making some real long passes going kind of east to west. So I think that'll work out nicely. If I make maybe two or three passes in this direction. And get down to the other end and make two or three passes at that end. Go something like this. I think maybe one more pass down at this end. Yeah, that's working perfect, I think. I'm going to go and do the same thing on the other end, and then I can start making kind of back and forth passes and be good to go. Let's see, let's get that little bit I missed in the corner there. There we go, just like that. All right. Now, at this point, I'm going to... Like I said, I'm going to do the other end, go back and forth over on the other end, and then I'm going to start making some long passes going up and down uh, east to west. So I think that's going to work out nicely, and I'm thinking by the time that this field is done, this contract is over, I'll get all the equipment back up there at the shop there, and then I'm going to make a decision whether or not I'm going to make a lo take the loan, get the equipment that I need, and take on the additional contract. Like I said, we'll see how it goes. All right, so I am all done with the contract on this field. I'm going to go ahead and head back up to the shop and collect on all the contracts. And I think I think I made a decision. I think I'm going to go ahead and take out that loan. The more I think about it, the more I think that it's going to be a short-term pain for a long-term good. I think that in the end, I'm going to be able to use this set of equipment on more than just contracts. I'll be able to use this you know, around my farm, and I'll be able to use it for other things besides this contract type as well. So, yeah, in the end, I think it's going to be worth it. So I'm going to cut out here and cut it back in as soon as I get to the shop. All right, I made it back here to the shop. I'm going to go ahead and step inside, collect on the contracts. Hopefully, the farmers will be by soon to pick up all their equipment, and then I'm going to take out a loan and get the necessary equipment that I need in order to complete the next contract. 
And yeah, I'm going to be going into a fair bit of debt, but I think it's going to be worth it. I think it's going to be okay. But we'll see you on the other side. All right, and this is what we invested in. This is what we went into debt, over $250,000 worth of debt for this. This is a Homer uh, root crop harvester. Now, the great thing about this, is, and the reason why this is so amazing, is this does more than just the average everyday root crops. You can see Homer has come up with the technology to be able to harvest sugar beets, but they can also do potatoes, parsnips, red beets, uh, carrots, the whole nine yards. It even does cotton and sugar cane. How amazing is that, that they made this universal harvester that just works. All you have to do is buy the header that is required for that specific crop. It then will intake and load all the various bits into the harvester and you're good to go. This is, this is amazing. And this, I, like, I was really humming and hawing about whether or not I was going to go into the debt to do this. But I think at the end of the day, I think this is going to be so worth all the money. Because we're going to be able to do any contract that, that can be done with this. So I invest, you know, the next, what, 20, 30, 40 grand for the next header. I can do potatoes. I can do another 20, 30, 40 grand, however much it is, and do red beets and sh and uh, parsnips and carrots and so on and so forth. I can even do cotton. Like this, this just opens the door to so many different things, and I think this is going to be worth it in the end. So I'm going to go ahead and get to going because we've got a contract now. Uh, oops, I'm going to need to move this trailer because... Uh, there it is. Let's go ahead and move this right over here. Make it something like this. Okay. Let's go ahead and load this onto the trailer. There we go. Perfect. Now, now let's head over to the new contract that we just took out. Which uh, which one was that again? That was over on field. Was it four? 49. Field 49. All right. I'm going to go ahead and head over there, and I will see you when we get there. All right. So we're pulling in to the farm over here. This is the farm owner. He owns the field across the way, which is the one I'm going to be working on. I'm just trying to find a good place to kind of set everything up. Um, hmm. Okay, I think that'll work for right now. So yeah, the field I need to work on is right across the street, right there. But I need to be able to get to... There we go. Now let's get turned around. I think, I think I'll be able to squeeze out right here. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. All right, let's unfold the header. Let's drop this down. Oh, got to unfold the harvester too. Can't forget about that. Here we go. So 
So I'm just going to start making my way around the field. Once I get everything all kind of tidied up around the edges, make a few headlands here and there, I'll be able to run back to the farm. I'll have to go and get my trailer, my tractor, uh, so I can make the deliveries I need to make. Because I need to take this, wow, I need to take this way down to the, the farmer's market, I believe. Um, let's see. So yeah, this is, whoa, 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 I am getting ahead of myself here. So yeah, this thing is just handling perfectly. It's doing exactly what I want it to do, everything I need it to do. I'm really excited, and Homer did a fantastic job making this equipment that is so universal. This thing is going to be an absolute game changer to be able to harvest uh, sugar beets, potatoes, uh, red beets, parsnips, carrots, and cotton. Now, I can't do sugar cane because, I mean, I'm not going to be able to grow it around here, but, I mean, if one day I ever need to, you know, go somewhere else, I'll be able to harvest sugar cane. I mean, I'll just need to buy the header for it, and when I have that, I'll be able to, to do whatever it is I want to do. So, it's, it's fantastic. I'm so excited to be able to do this. And I think at the end of the day, it's going to be a good way to, to get additional sugar beets for the farm. And then on top of that, be able to do this last second contract uh, before the big snow hits. We're going to be getting some snow here very, very soon. It's in the forecast. And once that hits, then pretty much everything's going to be uh, coming to a, a slow, slow stop. I'm going to have to... You know, figure out what I can do around the farm to kind of keep me busy. Potentially try and figure out some uh, some ways to make some additional income. I just don't know. We'll have to figure that out. But at this point, I'm going to go ahead and cut out and cut us back in as soon as I'm done with this field. We'll see you in a while. All right, got the first trailer load, as you can see. 25,000 plus liters of sugar beets. We're going to go ahead and drop this off. And then go and grab some more and just keep going back and forth. That's what we got to do at this point. So let's see. The Maple Exports, which is right here. Pull in here. And then back here. I believe. Yep, there we go. Oops. Perfect. There we go. All right. I'm going to start making my back and forths and get everything I need to get done done. All right. I am all done with this field. I have got to take this last bit up to the maypole exports and get it all sold off we'll see you over there so i'm rapidly approaching the sell point up here and i'm going to go ahead and just sell everything off that i need to sell i'm going to keep what i can and then once i get everything all squirreled away and figured out i will head back to the farm and let you all know the final total of leftover sugar beets so i will be back in just a little while all right so I'm back here at the farm getting ready to drop off what I have remaining here from the trailer now let's see what I got I had 21,000 liters of sugar beets now when everything's all said and done 51,000 oh yeah check that out that's nice over 30,000 liters left over. Had to make a couple trips up here, but it was worth it. So now uh, I need to go ahead and park this equipment. I need to then uh, go out and get my harvester back from the field. So I've got a, a fair bit of work to do. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that stuff real quick and then probably... Uh, come back here and figure out what to do next because 
we're about uh, noon on uh, on the current day, so I just need to come up with a plan. I'll just park that there. All right. I will be back uh, here on the farm shortly when everything's all brought back and good to go. Actually, before I go, what's this looking like? Uh, oh, this is all done. All right, well, no more grass to process. So, oops. There we go. So that leaves us with... 255,000 liters of hay, 252,000 liters of silage, and 61,000 liters of methane. Now, I could sell off this methane right now and probably make a pretty tidy profit. That wouldn't, uh, would not be a bad idea whatsoever. I'm going to kick around what to do with that. But, uh, like I said, I'm going to go and get the harvester and stuff back here at the farm. We'll see you in a bit. And there we go. Everything is all back and taken care of. Now, I need to figure out what it is I'm going to do from here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out for just a sec. I'm kicking around the idea. Because we are in the winter time, and there's not so much to do, I'm thinking about cutting back some of these trees, specifically... I'm thinking about these couple of trees here that are right along the driveway just to kind of clear out a little bit of extra space. But then I'm thinking about like a lot of these trees here. I think it would be kind of good to cut back and get under control. Cut these all down so that way I have some wood that I can just use as a kind of sell point uh, or a sell product. Just get the cash for it and kind of go from there. I think that'll actually work out rather nicely because then I won't have to uh, go without anything throughout the rest of the winter. Because once I collect on this contract and get paid for it, that's it. There's going to be no more contracts going on the rest of the winter until probably March or April. So it's going to be rather sparse going for, for a little while. So... Like I said, I'm going to kick around the ideas and, and see what I can come up with. I will be right back. So I came up here to the shop and I need to go ahead and buy all the equipment I'm going to need to be able to make these plants work. Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and clear out some of the trees there. 
We are in the winter time, so it's something that can be done that will allow me to at least generate some kind of revenue while the, the contracts and all that stuff are slow. The ground's starting to get hard. It's starting to freeze, so there's not a lot of things to do other than try and make sure that everything around the farm is just properly kept up on and maintained. So that's what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to go ahead and... I think I'm just going to lease everything because right now I've only got $55,000 and if I go any more into my own pocket, I'm not going to make it the winter. So I've got to be very, very smart and safe going forward because it's going to be at least until April, maybe even May before we start getting good, consistent contracts. I might get one, two, three of them pop up in April, but they're most likely not going to be big and they're not going to be well paid so it's one of those that if I get those contracts and that's a big if well it'll just it'll be several months from now and yeah it's just one of those we're going to be spending months uh, we're going to be spending t money on things during these off months where we're not going to be able to generate a whole bunch this is the only thing i can think of that really is going to be able to generate any kind of revenue moving forward and it's going to help better uh, maintain the the farm i'm not going to worry about the stumps right now i'm only going to worry about getting the trees out of the way and then figure out how to deal with the stumps uh, probably in the springtime that's kind of what i'm thinking about at the moment uh, we'll just kind of see how all that goes. So like I said, I'm going to go ahead and walk inside and start leasing and buying the things I need. Like I said, I'm going to buy a chainsaw, lease a trailer of some sort, uh, for the wood. And we'll go from there. All right. So I've got the chainsaw, but as you can see, I don't have a trailer out here. It's because it just dawned on me. My normal trailer that I already own and can do things with has a uh, like a bale configuration to where I'll be able to take down the sidewalls of the trailer and be able to add uh, straps to it. So I think that will be a much better solution of transporting trees around rather than getting a new trailer specifically for logs leasing it keeping it for who knows how long and then at the end of the day just kind of trying to make enough in the wood sales to be able to then turn around and you know pay off the lease kind of thing i'm hoping that i'll have enough wood to be able to kind of get ahead of that game but if i've already got a trailer that'll work then why am i going to spend the money on just leasing an extra trailer i don't need a wood trailer i can just use my bale trailer and just load it very very carefully so that's kind of where i think i'm gonna go i'm gonna give it a try and see if it's see if it's going to be as difficult or or I shouldn't say as difficult. If it's going to be difficult or not. If I'm just throwing logs all over the place and it's just not working out, then I'll go ahead and, you know, just do what I got to do, get a trailer, and just go from there. But right now, I'm going to try this out because I think at the end of the day, I will save money and quite a bit of, a, quite a bit of it because the leasing cost on a trailer for a log trailer is going to be... I'm not going to say it's going to be hugely expensive, but it's not going to be cheap. There we go. Close that. Alright, so I need to grab my tractor, my trailer, and get the tractor all in the proper config... Uh, sorry, the trailer in the proper configurations to be able to get that uh, working. So I'm going to go ahead and hook up to my tractor with the uh, front grappler, the rear weight, as well as the trailer, and get the trailer all uh, situated and where it needs to be, because like I said, I'm pretty sure I can just take out these little sidewalls. I can take out these two 
sidewalls here and then the rear dump of the trailer and be good to go. So that's what I'm going to try. We'll see in a little bit. All right, I am pulling back into the farm here. As you can see, I've got the bale or the trailer all configured. I had to go up to the uh, shopping area to be able to take all these down, and I have them actually storing the side panels for me. Um, they, thankfully, because I do so much business out of there, they kind of grant me little favors every once in a while. So, yeah, they're they're holding the two side panels and the rear. Uh, deck trailer as well so that way I'm not having to uh, store it around here I'll just have to go back there to get everything all situated so let's go ahead and let's see we can test the straps and yeah look at that we've even installed those uh, top straps there that should come in some very nice and handy um, with what we're gonna do here so let's go ahead and leave this here we need to leave the front weight And then go and get the yeah get this stuff right here so this way I'll be able to cut larger logs I'll be able to load it up without having to like cut them within cut them by hand and, and not by hand but cut them to where I can lift them up by hand and go from you know kind of go from there this will be a much better situation I'll get bigger logs and kind of get a better uh, better rate going because yeah I am going to have to do all the cutting by hand because all I have is a chainsaw but I think it's going to be okay so let's see where can I set this trailer that's going to kind of make sense uh, I mean yeah I think this will I think it will work right there I think that will be okay let's see There we go. Knock this tree over. Ooh, that was close. go let's see I think this would be a good spot yeah that's almost almost six meters yeah, about five. Six and seven. What if I take just a little off the top? Okay, perfect. So let's see if I can do this. Okay, so we'll lift that over. So the swinging of the log is going to be a little bit difficult to deal with, but I think. I'll be able to f get this. Let's see.
There we go. So I can just keep stacking up the wood and just keep piling up and piling it up. I think that'll work out pretty good. Let's try the next one. Now that I've got a little bit of extra room right here, what I could do is try and grab it here on the end. It might make driving a little easier. Yeah, look at that. I can even bump it up against the blocking guard right there. go there so now that isn't going anywhere that should actually work out very nicely oof all right perfect I think uh, I think this is gonna be a winning combination but I also think that this will be a good spot to leave it because we have gotten a lot of stuff done this episode. But I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please show me by liking, sharing, subscribing, following, commenting, doing all the things the algorithms enjoy you doing that shows you're engaged with this channel and enjoying the content. And that being said, I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care.